Smells like a new home in here. At least it smells a lot better than it has been. Little Hobby House version two update. We have our bathroom almost ready to install the new thing, new thing, other things, you know, all those things you use in the bathroom. There really wasn't much reason to save. There was a lot, uh, there was a lot of mold. There was a lot of mildew. There'll be some photos that we will show from my fancy ass camera and you can just see how bad it was. But we have finished all of this at least. We've put up the drywall there. We got a full sheet of drywall up on the ceiling where there was a, uh, a bad patch job. Y'all saw me picking at it last time. Well, I got up in the attic, I vacuumed out everything, and uh, the reason why it was a really bad patch job is that they had the backer board. It was just a, a sheet of OSB essentially. And it was just up in there, just sitting up in there. And then they had the, the square sheet of drywall just screwed in with only one screw, mind you. So not only did they use the wrong materials for the patch, but they did a, a really bad job of putting the patch in. And what this caused was every time you would open and close the door, the slamming of the door would cause the patch to go up and down. And of course, if a patch is moving all the time, then it's not gonna be a very good patch. So that, it, it, like, like I've said before, it was just a bunch of really poorly done patch jobs that made it look overwhelming, at least on the surface. But the bones of this house are looking better and better the further that we go into it. Uh, this, we're just gonna do drywall. We're not gonna do casing on that. Um, the kitchen we're going to get to after everything else is done, pretty much. Not much more to talk about over here, but man, it looks like a whole new place. It, it's really nice. Now, the, the sucking out of all the stuff in the attic. I didn't get the entire attic. I only got what we're working on because, boy, was that a much tougher job than I thought. But went to good old Harbor Freight, and as you can see, I got a 13-gallon uh, a portable dust collector here. It was $178. Um, the... <laughs> The bid that I got for backing everything out was many thousands of dollars. So I figured, you know, maybe I just get some equipment and do it myself. Well, you know, 178 plus tax at checkout. And they're like, do you want the $30 two year warranty? And I asked, what's the normal warranty? 30 days. And then the guy spouted off, you can suck up anything into this and return it within the two years for a replacement. And my response was, you don't know what I'm doing with this. And his response was, it doesn't matter if you pay the $30. <laughs> so he sold me. Immediately, I, I got the grate. I punched the grate out right here. And this thing has metal fan blades. Um, it will eat anything. So I've been sucking up all the drywall chunks, like, you know, two inch by two inch pieces of drywall chunks. I'm just sucking them straight up there. I got this four inch 50 foot hose. We've got this uh, this guy right here. And then I've got an attachment for the end that you can vacuum floors with. As you can see, the floors in here, other than the dust are pretty clean. And it's because of this. I throw that big old fan straight into the dumpster and it vacs right out into it. There's no emptying of anything. Super, super nice to have. As a matter of fact, when I rebuild the hobby house itself, I'm going to use this or a, a similar item to build a central vac system for it so that I can just shop vac at will at any time. And then it will go into a bin for that particular situation. But right now when I got a, you know, a, a 20 yard dumpster outside, I'm just going to shove it straight into that. So one of the best things that I've bought in a really long time and combined with that hose, fantastic. Uh, other than that, we've been working here in the bathroom, the single bathroom that we have in the house. As you can see, the I guess this is called underlayment is all like the half inch by 10 or 12 inch or whatever this is boards. Uh, and the underside of this house is super solid, but uh, we had a lot of water damage in here. There was water damage going down from the tub edge, so we had to rip all this out. Um, There's a lot of water damage. Not bad, but it, it was certainly bad enough that I wanted to do this kilt slayer, seal everything in just to be sure. And the place smells fantastic now between all the bleach treatment that I did to kill everything and the kilts. It already smells like a new house. Um, so that's great, actually, because this house stunk. Jeez, it stunk. 
Uh, so what it looked like to me was that we had a bunch of water leak that was coming right from here. And that was seeping in between the layers of drywall and going down. Because on the inside, as you can see, this is the backing wall for the bedroom in there. There's no water damage. There's no mold on this actual drywall behind it. So that tells me that the moisture wasn't on the inside of this wall. It was on the outside of the wall, at least one of the panels. And it was soaking between the two panels of sheetrock that were there. It was going down. You can, you can see a little bit. I, I don't know if there's enough contrast in here with that light turned on, but... You can see a little bit of uh, water damage there, but for something that was probably leaking for like five years or so, you know, I thought it was a silcock. It turns out it wasn't, you know, we can see the basement right below us here. And uh, just from the way that the water damage went, that's, you know, that, that's at least my best guess. But this is the silcock right here. We have access. There's actually this panel on the other side, which I'll probably make into an actual access panel instead of drywalling back over. And I'll be able to exchange this out pretty easily and we've got access to everything right here we've got our uh, main sewer stack just like right below us it's uh, a fantastic look at what we need to do to the house and just how bad that it was which visually was extremely bad but when it boiled down to what was actually wrong with this place it was just all surface pretty much so we are going to move you know our sink was right here uh, I'm, I'm going to chop all that stuff up, hide it into the wall. There's already some power going into an outlet right there. I'm going to pull up for an outlet up here so you can like, you know, charge a razor or whatever. And then the sink is actually going to go over here. And uh, it might be weird, but I'm going to do it anyway because it, it's, it'll just be so much nicer. And then the toilet, instead of having it right here, you know, kind of like trapped in the corner, we're going to turn it sideways and move it out a couple of inches. and It'll be right here. And I think that'll be nice. It doesn't really matter, though, at the end of the day. So this is a, just all fun and games. The flange does need to be replaced. So I figure while we're replacing the flange, we'll see if it just needs to be moved. I didn't look at that. Uh, I think it's like, oh, man, solid copper, all copper. Just everything on here. I mean, the stack is copper. Our uh, waste is copper. The Here's the other stack on this side. The vent going up to the top. Just all solid copper, which as long as we don't damage is going to be really nice to uh you know it's just not going to have a problem whereas pvc over time a lot of times it'll get brittle and crack and you know you have problems with the joints especially if there's any sort of like shaking if anything isn't attached very well pvc ends up having problems over time whereas copper is more flexible so i'll probably keep as much copper as i can that is about where we're at at this point uh have done absolutely nothing to the bedrooms we're really at the point where we need to come in uh, the sheet rocker is going to come in and he's going to do all of our seams for us and i'm going to continue working on the bathroom i'm going to get on the tile as soon as we get this tub just the old fiberglass tub and i'm going to do tile up the walls and tile on the floors and probably wayne's coating uh, for cheapness because uh, you know tile kind of adds up so we'll probably do wayne's coating around the side but we'll find out i don't know maybe i find a good deal on tile and i just do it all in tile because it would look pretty sweet so yeah, there we go. That's where we're at. Just a couple hours a day here and there, and we're making really fast progress. I think this will probably be ready in maybe two months or so to move everything all over. I'm looking forward to it. This place, I mean, I can tell you right now, the hobby house, my feet get really cold. When it's cold outside, the, the last videos we shot where I'm wearing the same hoodie the entire time, my feet were freezing and it was, uh, what's the best way to put it? It was putting me in a bad mood. It gets me in a bad mood when my feet are freezing all the time. In this house, I mean, it's set at 55 and my feet are already warmer on this floor than they were in that house that sit to, I think it's set to like 62 or 63 or 65, depending on what day it is in there. So yeah, this'll, this'll be an upgrade and it'll let me tear down that little, uh, catalog home of a house. <laughs> Yes, so good times. Looking forward to it. If you got any questions about this, don't bother asking because I'll probably have no answers. But otherwise, leave them down below. I'll do my best to get to them. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.